Hey, I'm Damien and I'm back with another video. This is kind of a recap of all the longer tutorials that I've done in the past couple years. You know, the reason why I'm making this video is because a whole bunch of new people just subscribed to my channel. I was really surprised because, uh, you know, I haven't been keeping up with it. I was going to take a little break from YouTube for a while, but just because I saw all these new subscribers, I figured, hey, maybe people are interested in learning how to make motion comics and animations. And if you're watching this and you find it interesting, please subscribe and please share. And um, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's get into this uh, recap video. So in the comments on one of my videos, somebody asked, hey, why don't the artists just draw on separate layers? That would make animation so much easier. This is art by Tony Doya, and that's exactly what he does. He puts his foreground and his backgrounds on separate layers because he's doing it digitally. But not everybody does that. Most of the comic book artists are going to be drawing things in one layer. And so you've got to do things the old-fashioned way. You've got to cut around the pieces that you want to move in your animation or your webcomic. And then once you cut that, it's going to leave a huge hole. It's going to leave a giant hole in your project. And you're going to have to fill in that hole with other stuff. So this is art by Donnie Hadijiwawa. And that's exactly what I had to do. So I cut out Savara's arm. And then I've got a huge hole. And I've done a whole bunch of videos about filling in the background. But what I haven't talked about is how you make the different layers for the different parts of the body. So here you can see I have to overlap. I've got to put the foreground a little bit over the background. So I've got to put Savar's body a little bit overlapping the arm. Because if I'm going to move that arm, uh, there's going to be like a hole. There's going to be some seams or some cracks if I start moving the background arm and I haven't filled it in. So one of the techniques that I do is once I cut the pieces apart, uh, I've got to expand the piece that's on the bottom so that's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to show you what I do. This is my technique that I've done in a bunch of other videos. But I've got to fill in the background so that when, let's say, this arm moves, there's not a big white hole in the background. So first, I takes a long time. I take a lot of time and care to fill in the background because that's the only way you can then have the arm move. And I'm using my background in Photoshop to cut out large elements and then fill it in so it looks realistic. So what I'm doing here is I'm filling in the wing so that I'll have a complete wing that can flap later. And then here, I've cut out the arm. I've got to extend it a little bit so that I can animate it and move it and it'll look natural. And you can see it, there's kind of a bit of chunk of shoulder that's going over the arm. So when I move the arm, there's not going to be a crack. So it takes quite a long time to cut out all the different elements that you want to animate. And you're basically using... Uh, the pen tool to cut out the pieces. You're doing uh, a lot of cutting and pasting, cutting existing material, moving it, and uh, and completing the different segments. So I'm completing the wings so that uh, they're full wings now, because in the actual comic book panel, that was cut off by the edge of the page. So now I've cut out all of the pieces of Savara. I've got her arms, wings as separate pieces, and uh, now we're going to talk about moving this from Photoshop into After Effects. I tried to animate in Photoshop because that's, you know, that's where my heart is. I'm a Photoshop person, but it was just impossible. People said, try After Effects, and I tried it, and yeah, it is way better. So I open up After Effects, and what you're going to do is make sure your file is saved as an Adobe uh, PSD, not a TIFF. Do not drag a TIFF file, TIFF file into After Effects. Drag your PSD into After Effects. That's the only way you're going to retain the layers so they work. So here you go. You're going to enable layer styles. You hit OK. And what you get in After Effects is a file that you can now use. You've got this one that looks like a little piece of film and then this one down here which is a folder. When you open up those layers you're going to see all of your layers inside and you drag that down into your project and single composition that's what I keep it at. I hit OK and this opens up your file with all the layers that you can now animate. So that puts us in a great position. Like I've said many times before, After Effects is way better for animation than Photoshop. You've got curved motion paths, you've got ease and whiz. It's definitely the way to go. And I learned everything I know about After Effects by watching YouTube tutorials. So thank you to YouTube for teaching me how to do this. 
one of the tricky things is that when you bring your Photoshop file into After Effects, all the layers are in different positions. They're all messed up. You've got to move them around. And you also usually have a top layer, which is like a, a static frame. It's like a static photo with no layers. It's just a, a solid photo of your whole image that you've got to make disappear. So get rid of the top layer and then reorder. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm reordering all the layers because they were all backwards. And then once you do that, you can start to animate. All right, so that was a quick recap of all my previous videos of how to transition from a flat file in Photoshop into After Effects so that you can make a comic book trailer or motion comic. So a little bit about me. I'm a writer of comic books. I'm also a photographer. I've got a lot of background in Photoshop. And a couple years ago, I started making some uh, motion comics and some comic book trailers. And then I started making some videos and teaching other people how to do it. So if you like it, please subscribe. Uh, I'm getting a lot more subscribers than I thought, so I guess there's some interest in this. And uh, I respond to any posts that you put under the video, so if you've got a question, you know, just post it and uh, I'll definitely respond. And if a lot of people ask the same question, I'll make a video about it. So I love to do this. I love to share. So thank you to all of you who just subscribed.